Today, fingerprints are the most basic means of personal identification in criminal investigation. Over the history of forensic science, fingerprint identification stands out from other scientific criminal investigation in that for over a hundred years it's been the basis for criminal history foundation at almost every police agency in the world. The International Association for Identification was established in 1915 and it was the first professional organization in forensic science. And subsequently, the certified latent print examiner certification that the IAI issues was established in 1977. It was the first of its kind among criminal investigation circles as well. More fingerprints have been collected over the years from crime scenes than any other form of evidence. Whereas other forms of biological evidence tend to change, that is not the case with fingerprints. Unless unnatural forces such as injury, surgery, or disease cause deformity in someone's prints, they do not change over the course of someone's lifetime. In this chapter, we're going to discuss the different types of prints, individualizing characteristics of prints, the types of prints patterns, and the process for identifying prints and various methods for collecting prints. Edmund Lacard formulated the basic principle of forensic science called Lacard's Exchange Principle. This principle asserts that whenever two surfaces make contact, there is an exchange. When this is applied to criminal investigation, the suspect will make contact with the scene and bring with him or her something that is left behind and, in turn, will take with him or her something from the scene. There's a transfer of evidence that takes place. Fingerprints are a print or impression caused by the friction ridges of a finger. In keeping with Lacard's principle, contaminants are transferred from the peaks of friction ridges on someone's fingerprint to another surface. And they may be classified according to a variety of individualizing characteristics. Prints from someone's fingers are not the only prints that can be used for classification and identification. There are the most common types of prints, those from fingers and toes. These are called digits. There are also prints that are present in the palms of someone's hands or on the soles of someone's feet, called palmer or planter prints. Latent prints are those which are left behind when someone contacts a surface and they are not visible to the naked eye. Latent prints are collected by the use of investigative tools such as fingerprint powder or chemical reagents. Patent prints are those that are visible to the naked eye and can originate from prints that have been in contact with things such as blood, ink, or other materials. Plastic prints are also visible to the naked eye and are found in three-dimensional terms such as in a bar of soap, candle wax, a chewed piece of gum, or putty, for instance. The individualization characteristics, often called minutia, that I've been referring to can take the form of, but are not limited to, those such as bifurcations, islands, and dots. Bifurcations are similar to a fork in the road, where the road splits. Islands are ridges that stand alone in formations between the ridge lines in a print. Dots are formations that have the appearance of what a period would look like in grammatical punctuation. There are three classes of fingerprints, loops, whorls, and arches. Loops must have one or more ridges entering from one side of the print, curving, and exiting from that same side. Approximately 60 to 65 percent of the population has loops in their fingerprints. Now beyond knowing whether or not someone just has a loop formation in their print, there are also ways of determining whether the prints come from the right hand or left hand, which I might add is often difficult to determine from prints that are collected at crime scenes. For instance, a print from someone's left thumb has what's called a left slant. The same goes for someone's right thumb, which has what is called a right slant. Sometimes prints are collected at a crime scene, and they may be partial prints. They may be smudged or even unreadable. However, when enough detail of a print is collected, the process of identifying its characteristics becomes much easier. Arches are ridges that enter the prints from one side and leave out the other side. There are two distinct types of arches, plain and tinted. The plain arch has a wave-like pattern similar to a rolling hill, uh, in other words, the opposite of being on a high mountain peak. The tinted arch shows a sharp spike at the center or the top of the arch, which is like that high mountain peak I just referenced. Whirls are fingerprint patterns in which some of the ridges make a turn through at least one circuit, and they contain at least two deltas. In plane whirls, the circuit of ridge flow is between two deltas, and if an imaginary line is drawn between the two deltas, 
the recurving ridge flow would contact the imaginary line. A central pocket loop whirl consists of at least one recurving ridge, or an obstruction, with two deltas. When the imaginary line is drawn, no recurving ridge within the pattern area touches the line. Central pocket loop whirl ridges make one complete circuit, which may be spiral, oval, circular, or any variant of a circle. Double loop whirls consist of two separate and distinct loop formations with two deltas and one or more ridges which make a complete circuit. When the imaginary line is drawn between the two deltas, at least one recurving ridge within the inner pattern touches the line. An accidental whirl consists of two different types of patterns with the exception of a plain arch. They also have two or more deltas or a combination of patterns which do not conform to any of the other whirl pattern definitions. When analyzing question prints, comparisons are made according to the presence of ridge flow patterns, minutia, and unique ridge appearances, such as skin pores, shapes, and ridge endings. The conclusions of such analysis will fall into one of three outcomes. Individualization, which means that the question prints are derived from the same source as the suspect or person. You're able to identify the print. Elimination. This is where the print is identified but is not derived from the same source as the suspect or the person in question. Or inconclusive. This is where there's not enough detail present to either identify or eliminate the print.